Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the Biden administration says it is moving to expand access to COVID-19 vaccines, freeing up more doses for states. We've made it to midweek and outside with live cam. Beautiful start to the day, perhaps a little muggier out there and temperatures hovering in the mid 40s here in the city. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of February. Thanks for joining us today after Groundhog Day. And so we hear there's more winter, but maybe not here in San Antonio. Yeah, six more weeks of winter here, Mike. That is the question, which means we're going to be up in the mid 70s today. See? OK, yeah. so so <laughs> flip flop. Everything Phil says yeah, basically, but I mean, that's not winter for us anyway, so it should be mid 60s right now. We will see that by Friday, but get ready for a somewhat of a heat wave. Not this morning. It's still uh, chilly. We've got dry enough air out there that it's allowing temperatures to drop down a little bit. Mostly clear skies, not much of a breeze. 44 here in town, 40 in Kerrville, but overall temperatures are up compared to what they were yesterday. We did have some freezing readings in parts of the uh, hill country yesterday. Mold, Mountain Cedar and Elm are all on the low side and I think we drop down maybe a couple of more notches in the next few hours. 42 degrees, normal low temperature and then big warm up. We gain 30 plus throughout the day, mostly sunny and up to 74. Ain't seen nothing compared to tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be close to a record high temperature. I don't think we're going to be hitting it, but uh, within within reach of that, then we kind of get a reality check going in toward the weekend. Any anything that that confirms Punxsutawney Phil's prediction around here. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Things looking uh, fairly uh, good here on the roads. Lots of uh, uh, green all around. So if you're someone who heads out early or someone who's waiting for someone to come home, uh, things look pretty good right now. Let's go to a Bandera Road, only place where we're really seeing any sort of delay. So 11 to 12 minutes between uh, 1604 and 410. Again, uh, basically south of uh, Hebner there is where the uh, whatever delay there is, is there. And taking a look at Transguide this morning, uh, 35 at Topper Wine. That looks fine. Let's uh, see if we can get one more there. 35 at uh, Bamsey. Also, uh, flowing smoothly this morning. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. A man wanted for eight warrants, including first degree murder and aggravated assault in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, was arrested in Live Oak last night. The Lone Star Fugitive Task Force says 22 year old Tyrese Lighty is accused of being involved in a shooting that left two people dead and several others hurt last October. Task Force officers found Lighty at an apartment in the 13,000 block of Oak Terrace Drive in Live Oak last night. He was arrested without incident. Lighty is now in the Bear County Jail and is awaiting to be extradited back to South Carolina. Now to an Amber Alert, the Salina Police Department north of Dallas looking for two year old Levi Pugh who was abducted. He's uh, two feet six inches tall, weighs only 35 pounds. He has blonde hair, blue eyes. He was last seen wearing a diaper. Police are looking for 42 year old Isaac Pugh. There's his picture in connection with the abduction. He's believed to be driving a white 2019 Toyota Tacoma with Texas license plate M D T 1625. Law enforcement officials believe this child is in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information, call the Salina Police Department at 972-547-5350. Now the coronavirus pandemic, the more contagious variant of the coronavirus has mutated once again. Experts are worried this will impact the effectiveness of the vaccines. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. This morning, an urgent push to vaccinate against the coronavirus before mutations take hold. Doctors in England say a more contagious strain that originated in that country has mutated again, and it appears vaccines are less effective against the new variant, similar to the variant first found in South Africa. But it's a very stressful situation. In the U.S., infections and hospitalizations are dropping. California reported 12,000 new cases Tuesday, the lowest daily case count since Thanksgiving. But Dr. Anthony Fauci is sounding the alarm about the next six weeks because of the virus mutations now spreading. When you have that much virus circulating, you're going to get a lot of mutations, no doubt about it. So we're really concerned that it's almost a race here of trying to suppress the level of replication. The CDC says 32 million Americans have now received the vaccine, but access to doses will soon expand. The Biden administration announcing 1 million vaccine doses will be sent to more than 6,000 pharmacies across the country beginning next week. This is a critical step to provide the public with convenient, trusted places to get vaccinated in their communities. State and local guidelines will determine who's eligible to get a shot at their neighborhood pharmacy, and availability will be limited at first. 
Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And let's take a look at where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. 15 new deaths were listed in the latest report. The seven day average is up to 1,510 COVID-19 cases that we see in 24 hours. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says we appear to have stabilized in our hospital numbers. This morning there are 1,176 COVID-19 patients, 399 are in the intensive care unit and 232 are on ventilators. CVS Pharmacy plans to distribute the COVID vaccine at select locations across San Antonio. Appointments can be made at CVS.com or on the CVS app starting February 9th. Only people in phase 1A and 1B are eligible to receive the vaccine. Availability is limited and walk-ins will not be accepted. Vaccinations are set to begin February 11th. We have all this information on KSAT.com. And time now is 435 and 46 degrees for now. So ahead on GMSA, a first look at why Jeff Bezos is stepping down as CEO of Amazon. A Capitol police officer who died from injuries sustained during last month's riot at the Capitol is being honored in the building he helped protect. And back outside with live cam, a Wednesday forecast with Mike is coming up. We'll look ahead to the upcoming weekend as well. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 438. This morning, the remains of Capitol Police officer who died from injuries sustained during last month's riot are lying in honor in the building he helped protect. President Biden and other leaders paid their respects to Officer Brian Sicknick in the rotunda last night. It is unusual for private citizens to receive the honor, but congressional leaders arranged it. In a statement, Sicknick's family thanked lawmakers for the gesture and thanked Americans who have offered sympathy and support. Sicknick was a New Jersey native and a former member of the National Guard. He died the day after the riot, and officials are investigating his death as a murder. U.S. House has created a new rule to punish lawmakers who bypass metal detectors set up after the U.S. Capitol breach. It passed late last night. First time offenders will be fined $5,000. The fine for subsequent offenses is $10,000. Metal detectors were installed outside some of the House chamber doors after the January 6th insurrection, but several House members have simply been walking around them. Some have refused to hand over their bags after setting off alarms. Others have argued with Capitol Police trying to enforce the measures. A powerful Republican steering committee has not yet decided whether to strip freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of her committee assignments. The Georgia Republican is under fire for her ongoing controversial comments. They include questioning whether the Parkland school shooting was staged and doubting that a plane really hit the Pentagon on 9-11. Some GOP House members believe she should at least lose her new assignment to the Education Committee considering her lies about school shootings. If the GOP doesn't act, House Democrats have pledged to introduce a resolution today to remove Green from her assignments before the House Rules Committee. When the Spurs host the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight, LaMarcus Aldridge will not be in uniform. According to the team, Aldridge is suffering from soreness in his right hip and as a result will miss his fourth game of the season. Spurs coming off two losses against the Memphis Grizzlies. Hopefully they will turn things around tonight. Tip off against the T-Wolves, 730 at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. Yes, go Spurs, go. Turn it around. 441, 46 degrees. And still ahead, why anchoring furniture and televisions in your home is even more important right now. And next, Jeff Bezos stepping down as CEO of Amazon. We'll tell you why and what's next. And welcome back. It is 444. Jeff Bezos is stepping down as CEO of Amazon. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, end of an era. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, announcing he's stepping down. The man who started Amazon in 1994, building it from an online bookstore into a global giant worth more than $1.6 trillion. Trying to find a, a product that actually matched the internet technology. That was really the key. Because right now, the web is still a fairly immature platform. Changing the way we shop, stream, and get our deliveries. Announcing he'll leave his role as CEO later this year. The idea for Amazon has made Bezos one of the wealthiest people on the planet, worth an estimated $196.4 billion. So what will this change do to Amazon stock? And what's next for one of the world's richest people? It's all coming up at 7 a.m.
With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. A new warning for parents uh, about uh, furniture and television sets that, if not secured, are prone to tipping over. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris reports, consumer advocates want parents to take action now that many children are spending more time at home. Pick out all your jammies. It's a video message meant to disturb parents, a campaign showing how furniture and TV tip overs happen, even when you're watching. New government numbers are alarming. Since 2000, 451 children, most under the age of six, have been killed by a tip over, including little Ted McGee, not even two years old. When I opened the door even further, right in front of me was his dresser that had fallen forward and immediately, oh my God, it's so quiet in here. He has to be under it. He's under it. Despite years of warnings, problems persist. On average, more than 11,000 children go to the ER each year after a dresser, bookcase or TV topples on them. The majority of deadly tip overs involve a television set. Safety advocates say keep your TV on a low, sturdy base and pushed back as close to the wall as possible. And while you may think only taller furniture is prone to tipping, Consumer Reports testing showed even some short dressers are unstable. There are safety standards, but they are voluntary, not mandated. Just last week, CB2 recalled 11,000 junction tall and low dressers after 10 reports of them tipping forward when they were not anchored to the wall. As families spend more time at home, the CPSC urges parents to anchor unstable furniture and TVs and know this can happen even when you're watching. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I remember as a kid using the bottom step of a dresser to get to the sock drawer mm -hmm. and the whole thing oh, my gosh. with an aquarium on top. <gasps> You are lucky. Fish and gravel everywhere. Oh my goodness, your mm -hmm. parents must have been super upset with Mortified. You. <laughs> and yes. mortified. Yes. <laughs> like, don't do that again, Mark mm -hmm. Austin. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Let's check traffic at 447. Samuel, what's happening out there? Uh, things are uh, looking uh, generally uh, okay out here, but we do have a bit of a delay in the uh, China Grove area on uh, Rigsby Avenue or US 87, depending on your a preference there. So a bit of a slowdown in that area at uh, Foster Road. So that's something to look out for if you're uh, the eastern part of uh, the county in the area this morning. Uh, looking a look here, we have some construction again on military, some lane closures in both directions uh, between uh, West Military and Southwest 36th. Uh, that's through Saturday starting at 7, so a couple of hours uh, from now. And looking at 90 right now, once you get inside 1604, 11 to 12 minutes uh, from 1604 to I-35. And here's a look at Trans Guide uh, 410 at Perrin Vital. That's looking nice and clear this morning, guys. Nice and clear sounds good. Thank you, Samuel. It doesn't get simpler than this declaratory statement. <laughs> Correct. And I just want to say right off the bat, we love our viewers. Yes, we do. Yes, and their sense of humor. <laughs> that's a, that's a, <laughs> a serious statement. It is. Anyway. The, the oh. rodent looks serious. <laughs> And mean that with love. Oh. And remember, we are meteorologists, not rodents. So just in case there was that. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for the case. I connect picture. All right. Uh, beautiful start this morning. Got some clear skies and we do have uh, relatively dry air, although the humidity has come up somewhat compared to yesterday. Dew points are up about five, 10 degrees in a few spots and a little bit higher there along the coastal plain. Low enough, though, humidity is right now to where temperatures are being allowed to drop down. We don't have much of a breeze out there. And like I said, with the, uh, the clear skies, that is going to definitely be changing throughout the afternoon. We'll start to see the humidity come back in here. Not oppressively humid, but yeah, you just start to kind of smell it a little bit more later on this afternoon and then especially overnight and into tomorrow. I mean, we're going to be flirting right around 60. That's where you can start to feel the humidity a bit more. That will be throughout a good chunk of the day tomorrow. Then tomorrow evening, here comes the latest front, the drier air. Now ahead of that, we're going to really start to see the temperatures come up. We're going to see some the air kind of compress, get all mushed together as that front approaches. What that's going to do is really help to heat things up. So uh, it's going to be up to 80 tomorrow, leaning toward the humid side. It'll definitely feel like spring, but then that drier air comes back in here and it's going to be sort of a uh, call it a reality check by Friday. Then that'll just put us back down to normal readings back down into the mid 60s. Um, maybe a couple of clouds. You see uh, just a few of them kind of scattered about out there and really there's not much. I mean, 
upstream from us, not much going on. Obviously, a big storm system off there to the northwest and the one that's been dumping and still dumping, <clears throat> excuse me, all the snow off to the uh, northeast. But again, there's not really any good systems coming in here to bring any substantial changes. Yes, we are going to be very hot tomorrow and that, you know, kind of front moving us back down to reality, but nothing that's just going to be off the charts around here. Two below right now in Cut Bank, Montana. Single digits for wind chill temperatures in Minneapolis, 10 in Chicago. But again, all that really cold air still stays up there to the north of us. So temperatures, I guess the best way to sum it up over the next, uh, say, five, seven days, either at or a little bit above normal seasonal. Then perhaps by late next week, there are some indications that we'll start to see a more substantial chunk of cold air coming down in here. 68 degrees today, mostly sunny skies at noon. And because that was our high temperature yesterday, actually above our high temperature yesterday. And then we'll top off in the mid 70s later on today with mostly sunny skies. And then tomorrow we're going to be getting up to 80. Now the record is 84. Does not look like it's in jeopardy, but uh, obviously it's going to be close to it. Front's going to move through late. It's going to be breezy on Friday and cooling back down to 65 degrees. Then on Saturday and I, I guess overall for the weekend, it's going to be pleasant, seasonably pleasant, a little bit on the warm side. Saturday had looked like there was going to be a more substantial chunk of cool air coming in here Sunday. That doesn't appear to be the case as of right now. Chance of rain late Monday, Tuesday, like I said, by late next week. Now there are some long range indications of a colder chunk of air coming in here. Oh, a real winter. Uh, as for, far us. As, for our standards, <laughs> yes. For now, we enjoy like 80 tomorrow. Yeah. 80 tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, like spring break. <laughs> 451, 46 degrees. And still ahead, why award season in Hollywood is getting off to a later start than usual. Here are your lottery numbers, starting out with pick three, 137, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 0, 1, 3, 1, Fireball 5. Cash 5, 2, 9, 11, 25, 35. And your Mega Millions, 13, 37, 38, 40, 67, Mega Ball 10, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. going to be a late start to award season, starting with the Golden Globes. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. More fallout for Marilyn Manson, accused this week of sexual, physical, and mental abuse by several women, including ex-girlfriend and Westworld star Evan Rachel Wood. Stars has dropped him from the series American Gods, and his talent agency, CAA, says it'll no longer represent him. Manson responded to the allegations with an Instagram post saying the claims were horrible distortions of reality and his relationships have always been entirely consensual with like-minded partners. Award season getting off to a later start than usual due to the pandemic. The Golden Globe nominations out this morning. Then tomorrow morning, the nominations for the Screen Actors Guild Awards. The Golden Globes usually air in January. This year, we'll see them at the end of this month. The SAG Awards have moved to April 4th three weeks before the Oscars. <laughs> this is what's in my bag. Sometimes Angelina Jolie opening up, sharing a peek inside her purse with British Vogue. And for those hoping to see a vial of Billy Bob Thornton's blood or something else bizarre, it's pretty normal stuff. Sunglasses, her wallet. For allergy and for headaches, for kids, chocolate, for mom. Oh, and of course, her phone. Sorry if that wasn't very interesting. An actress, Isla Fisher, with a birthday today. The Godmothered star is 45, while Star Wars and Harry Potter actor Warwick Davis is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.56 and 46 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, an update on Donald Trump's impeachment proceedings as Democrats blame him for the attack on the Capitol. And they say he must be blocked from ever holding office again. Plus, more details on Instagram's newest feature that lets you change your mind about deleting a post. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Capitol police officer killed in the January insurrection lies in honor inside the U.S. Capitol as Trump's impeachment lawyers argue he did not incite the violence. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest coming up. 
Outside with live cam, we're in the mid 40s right now, but if you love warmer temperatures, especially in the month of February, you're going to absolutely love Mike's forecast. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, February 3rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, I can't believe that I hear we're going to hit 80 this week. That's right. This week. So not necessarily today, Mike. No, but it's going to be still uh, 10 degrees above normal later on today. We'll be up in the mid 70s. Now we are starting off pleasantly cool out there. Uh, still a little bit above normal by just a degree as of right now. 43 degrees, no wind and uh, the air is still dry enough. We have the clear skies. So, you know, we may drop down another degree or two here or there. And uh, we're going to be well up into the, like I said, the mid 70s later on today. Temperatures are really going to be shooting up with this drier air. However, as temperatures go up this afternoon, we're also going to start to see the humidity come up a little bit. So, yeah, it's going to be warm and leaning toward the humid side, especially tomorrow. The aquifer yesterday took a fairly decent hit, went down seven tenths of a foot, and the allergens, everything is on the low side. Got a little bit of elm showing up. No oak pollen yet. That's to come. That's all that lovely yellow dust out there. Anyway, here's what the uh, water vapor imagery looks like. And, you know, it's not bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. Got a little bit of moisture aloft, so maybe a few uh, you know, high wispy clouds thrown in here and there. But otherwise, like I said, a really uh, nice day. And we're going to be seeing a lot of sunshine, mid 70s. Then, like I said, tomorrow, 80 near record. The record's 84 tomorrow. And then we get sort of a reality check on uh, Friday with the front moving through later on tomorrow. It's going to scour out all that humidity, so it's going to be much more pleasant on Friday. Back down to normal temperatures and just about normal over the weekend. Maybe by the late next week, there are some indications that we see some uh, some colder temperatures coming on in here and hopefully some rain by the middle of next week because nothing between now and then. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. Looking good on the map. Looking good on the map, Mike. Uh, nothing much uh, going on at the moment. So this would be a good time if you uh, want to head out. Let's take a closer look at uh, I-10 between Bernie and downtown San Antonio. 24 minutes going uh, northbound and then 25 minutes coming into town. And once you get inside 1604, it uh, looks like uh, 12 to 13 minutes there. So uh, travel time fairly good. And looking at other parts of the area, I-10 from Seguin uh, looking at 29 minutes, the 35 from New Braunfels, 26 minutes to San Antonio, and then 29 minutes on 37 uh, in from the Pleasanton area. And here's a look at Transguide, so you can see the roads, 410 at Perrin Vital, looking fine this morning. Mark Stephanie, over to you. New this morning, firefighters had to respond to a fire at a vacant apartment on the city's north side late last night. Happened around 930 in the 7200 block of Blanco. Just north of Loop 410, fire force authorities rather say it appears that homeless people got into the vacant apartment and started the fire. Firefighters were able to knock the fire down quickly. They estimate damage to be worth about ten to fifteen thousand dollars. No one was hurt. We are less than a week away from former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. This morning, we are getting a glimpse of the arguments his lawyers plan to make in his defense. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington. This morning, a somber remembrance inside the U.S. Capitol Rotunda. The cremated remains of an American hero lying in honor. The first family paying their final respects to fallen Capitol Police officer Brian Sicknick, killed in the January 6th insurrection. Hours earlier, House impeachment managers formally declaring it was former President Donald Trump who was singularly responsible for the violent attack that left five dead, including the officer adding it was a betrayal of historic proportions. Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanors by inciting violence against the government of the United States. In the 80-page brief filed Tuesday, Democrats referencing Trump's own words just before the insurrection. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. Saying after his failed efforts to overturn the presidential election, he worked the mob into a frenzy and aimed them like a loaded cannon down Pennsylvania Avenue. If you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. The impeachment manager citing these videos obtained by Just Security, showing the crowd responding to Trump in real time. Take the Capitol right now! The president's legal team directly pushing back in their own 14-page response, denying that Trump violated his oath of office, while suggesting an impeachment trial to convict a former president is unconstitutional. The judge and jury has already announced publicly that the uh, defendant must be convicted in this case. 
The documents also foreshadowing Trump's attorney's plans to defend his false and baseless claims that he won the election. And that impeachment trial begins next Tuesday. 17 GOP senators would need to join all of the Democrats in order to convict Trump. That right now looking unlikely. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, city and county officials stressing the importance of following COVID-19 guidelines after dozens of citations were issued over the weekend at a large house party. During that 100-person party, San Antonio police, who were called by neighbors, saw many people not social distancing and not wearing masks. In addition to citations given for underage drinking, police issued 36 $250 fines for people violating safety protocols. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg says the consequences go beyond having to pay a fine. I have uh, too many people that I know personally uh, and throughout this community who are able-bodied, relatively young, uh, in good health, and who have ended up in a hospital, in ICU, or worse. Uh, so don't, be a, don't become a statistic and don't be the reason why somebody's in the hospital. And with the Super Bowl coming up this weekend, city and county officials are highly stressing the importance of watching that game safely. The upcoming livestock and livestock show and rodeo and Spurs games are forcing a change at the AT&T Center. To avoid any scheduling restrictions, community labs will transition to two different COVID-19 testing sites. Friday will now be the last day of asymptomatic testing at the AT&T Center. Community labs will then move to the Bar Shop Jewish Community Center to begin free testing on Monday. A second free testing site at Rackspace Technology is set to begin the following day on February 9th. We have those locations and times on online at kset.com. 506 right now. We all remember these days learning to drive can be a downright scary experience and it's not just for the person who's learning. A new poll finds two out of three people surveyed said giving a driving lesson was scarier than learning to drive. I can see that. Our traffic expert Samuel King joins us now and Samuel what did that survey find? Well, it also found that a third of Americans have taught someone to drive and nine in 10 of those people actually found it to be a harrowing experience. The poll also looked at the trickiest skills to pass on and found those were parallel parking, changing lanes and merging onto the highway. Half of the respondents confessed they would be afraid to get in the car with their teenage selves. And here's why the average person had five close calls that almost resulted in an accident while they were learning to drive and one in five did get into an accident while learning to drive. The same number had a crash that damaged the vehicle. Now the study was commissioned by True Car and conducted by one poll and we'll have more on this coming up at six, including the common mistakes that new drivers make when they get behind the wheel. Mark Stephanie over to you. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a person who they say was involved in an armed robbery that happened on January 17th. Investigators say the suspect was seen breaking into a vehicle and taking items that was in the 8000 block of Bandera Road. When confronted by the victim, police say that suspect threatened the 41 year old woman with a gun and then ran away. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for information leading to an arrest. 508, 46 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why women are being warned not to participate in a popular TikTok challenge. And next, a closer look at how Facebook's oversight board works and how users can appeal content decisions. And taking a look outside with live cam, a cold start to your day. Grab your jacket, it's 45 degrees out there. But we'll warm up today and actually this week. We will check in with Mike later this morning. Social media has been a big point of controversy and Facebook's court like oversight board has overturned several of the company's decisions to remove, remove content. Max Massey explains how it all works. The board, which has been called Facebook's version of the Supreme Court, announced that it actually overturned Facebook's decision in four out of five cases before it. Facebook's oversight board is intended to create a new way for users to appeal content decisions on both Facebook and Instagram, given previous criticism over how the company handles hate speech, violent extremism, and graphic materials. Now, the 20-person board includes a former prime minister, a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and the former editor-in-chief of The Guardian. Facebook says its decisions are final and binding 
finding. The cases we're going to be talking about touched on the issues of hate speech, nudity, and COVID misinformation. All five cases involved Facebook taking down posts for breaking their rules. The first series of decisions come ahead of the most closely watched case yet for the board, whether former President Donald Trump gets to stay on Facebook or not. Earlier this month, Facebook and its subsidiary, Instagram, banned the ex-president's account from posting for at least the remainder of his term and potentially indefinitely. All of this happened after a mob of his supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol to protest the election results. Last week, Facebook said it referred to its suspension of the former president to the independent board for review. That board will have 90 days from that referral to decide whether the Trump ban should be upheld or not. But a spokesperson for the Facebook board said it expects to, quote, act more quickly than that, end quote. Guys, back to you. 513, about 45 degrees. And still ahead, more details on a warning for women not to participate in a popular TikTok challenge. Plus, Kia and Apple could be partnering to get into the electric car business. I'm still going for what's next, even with higher stroke risk due to AFib, not caused by a heart valve problem. So if there's a better treatment than warfarin, I want that. Eliquis. Eliquis reduces stroke risk better than warfarin and has less major bleeding than warfarin. Eliquis has both. Don't stop taking Eliquis without talking to your doctor as this may increase your risk of stroke. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. Get help right away for unexpected bleeding or unusual bruising. It may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. The number one cardiologist prescribed blood thinner. Ask your doctor about Eliquis. Vicks Vapo Patch. Easy to wear with soothing Vicks Vapors for her, for you, for the whole family. Trusted Soothing Vapors from Vicks. 517, a new report says Apple and Kia are in talks to make electric cars. ABC's Kenneth Moten has today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bites, Apple taking a step toward making electric vehicles. Reports out of South Korea say the company will announce a partnership with Kia later this month by investing more than $3 billion in the car maker. That report says the cars will be for sale in 2024. Both companies not commenting. Privacy concerns about TikTok's so-called red silhouette challenge. The trend involves using a red filter to hide scantily clad people. However, videos on YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit are providing instructions on how to get rid of the filter. And finally, Instagram is making it easier to change your mind about your deleted posts. The company just introduced a recently deleted feature. Users will now have 30 days to reverse course and restore deleted content. After that, the posts will be gone for good. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. We made Mike delete the app. He was doing a James Bond-like silhouette instead. <laughs> like, turns to the camera uh, with a gun. Yeah, but Sorry, it, Mike. It's going to be yeah. okay, Mike. 518 right now. Let's go ahead and check with Samuel. Yeah, I don't uh, know if Sam some of these features are good ideas. Yeah, Stephanie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mike could pull it off. Yeah, he, he probably could. Um, things looking uh, fairly okay. We did have a bit of a delay here and actually still do a little bit on this, uh, the on-ramp there. Uh, from uh, 37 northbound to I-10 eastbound, that's down to 31 miles per hour. So if you're uh, traveling in that area, that's something to uh, look out for this morning. The travel times on 37 uh, between 1604 and uh, I-10 looking good, 12 minutes in each direction. So that's a uh, fine air. And here's a look at uh, Transkai, 35 at uh, Top of Wine, uh, looking fine, and 35 at uh, Bamsey, not far from there, of course. Also looking good this morning, guys. Here's Mike, Mike Osterhage. That's right. You have a nice background to work Spe with. Yes, I do. Speaking of which, did you see the, uh, I saw this yesterday, I think Facebook, something like that. Uh, they're selling a t-shirt and it's got all six actors on it uh, oh. doing the, the pose mm. oh. and it says 59 years of 007. Six, oh, that's cool. From six people yeah. and waiting to find out who officially right. will be the seventh <laughs> now. No, just waiting for the movie to come out. Well, well there's, there's no time for that. Because, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> it got delayed again. Yeah. Yes. Again. Back and now again. in October of this This year, has been so. like the, 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 the Third, seventh, seventh time? Yes, at least yeah. the song's out. <laughs> uh, beautiful. 
Yeah, hopefully you weren't driving when you took this picture. Of course, that is not that's against the rules, but it's a gorgeous picture. Some of those high wispy clouds out there yesterday. Thank you very much for that uh, that picture. And this one looks pretty nice as well. We're going to see a beautiful sunrise. There's the uh, smokestacks over there at the quarry and We've got to 66 degrees. That was the high temperature yesterday. Normal high is 65 right where we should be. Had a couple of 70s and then add to that. I mean, we're looking at mid upper 70s, even some low 80s down to the uh, southwest later on today. So we will be almost 10 degrees above normal today and then add to that coming in here tomorrow. All right, as far as anything precipitation wise, Nothing. We'll have a couple of clouds over the next few days. You know, some morning clouds, maybe some afternoon uh, or a lot of afternoon sunshine, I should say. And uh, there's a front that's going to be moving through. It's perhaps is going to squeeze out a couple of sprinkles well off to the east, and that's going to be early, early uh, Friday morning. But other than that, again, nothing uh, going on into the weekend. This computer model tries to get a little rain coming in here by Monday and get kind of a little too soon. It looks like it may be late Monday and then into Tuesday when we see our uh, rain chance around here. Then there's some indications long term that we would see some colder air coming in. Obviously, all that's well up there along the uh, the Canadian border with those temperatures down in the teens and uh, 20s. But we still have there's the dividing line that's keeping all that really cold air up to the north. Obviously, some of it was invading the northeastern United States. There's another big chunk of it that comes through, and this is what's going to cool us down a little bit, just take us back down to normal from 80 tomorrow down to uh, 65 on Friday. And then we get into a zonal pattern, a very tranquil pattern going into next week. Zonal means almost straight west to east upper level winds, uh, and that means nothing going on around here. Temperatures will be at or maybe a little bit uh, above normal going into the first part of next week and no big storm systems, anything like that. Like I said, there are some indications that we may start to see uh, a chunk of colder air trying to come down in here by mm, perhaps late next week or even going into Valentine's weekend. Still a week and a half away, so things can definitely change. 68 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature today up to 74. Not that it's going to be humid today, but it's not going to be as dry. We'll start to see the humidity come back up a little bit. That's going to really help to hold temperatures up tomorrow morning, so we'll stay in the mid-50s and then get up to 80 in the afternoon. The record, again, is 84 degrees. It'll be close to it. Back to reality, if you will, on Friday and the weekend at or slightly above normal. Very pleasant weekend. Good to get some outdoor chores done. Maybe I still need to cut my backyard. Just thinking about that. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. Okay, and um, things to do. Hopefully some rain by the middle of next week. Lawn work in the forecast. At least it's growing since we had some rain. That's true. Um, that, is, back. that is true. We, we have something too, finally. Yeah. yeah. Yay. I know. <laughs> things are greening up a bit. 522, 45 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, two big musicals are headed for a screen near you. Your lottery numbers this morning, pick three, one, three, seven, fireball four, daily four, zero, one, three, one, fireball five. Cash five, two, nine, 11, 25, 35. And your mega millions, 13, 37, 38, 40, 67, mega ball 10, mega player two. Good luck. As the Golden Globe nominations are being announced this morning, we've got an update on the ceremony. Plus, there's some good news for Broadway fans missing their musical fix. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Broadway theaters are still shut down, but two big musicals are headed for a screen near you. The cast of the Tony winner, Come From Away, is set to reunite on a Broadway stage for a filmed version of the musical to be released in September. And John M. Chu is the new director of the planned Wicked movie, based on that smash hit musical. Chu also directed the film version of Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights, due out in theaters and on HBO Max in June. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler are re-teaming to host the Golden Globe Awards, but they won't be together. This year's Globes will be the first held on both coasts, with Polar at the show's usual site at the Beverly Hilton and Faye at the Rainbow Room in New York. Nominees will be at various locations worldwide as the pandemic continues to wreak havoc with in-person award shows. The 78th annual Golden Globes take place February 28th, nearly two months later than usual. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 527 and 45 degrees for now.
Still ahead on GMSA, the Biden White House has taken another step towards changing immigration policies. Plus, what health experts are saying about a certain vitamin that could potentially help prevent you from getting COVID-19. And we'll tell you why you might be able to get some free buffalo wings thanks to the upcoming Super Bowl. Good morning. We made it to Wednesday. It is February 3rd. It's about to get really warm around here, uh, but uh, Mike Osterhage has details on that. And uh, any rain in the extended forecast, Mike? Maybe way down the road, but uh, it's just not looking really promising as far as uh, any rain to, to help out the lawns and everything else. Uh, we've got a lot of clear skies right now. A couple of clouds out there should be a fantastic sunrise this morning and temperature out there at the airport. Grab a coat. It is 43 degrees. Normal lows 42 right in the ballpark where we should be. The humidity is still low enough, although these numbers have come up and they're really going to start to come up later on today. So you start to kind of notice more humidity uh, today and then especially overnight and tomorrow. Not much of a breeze, if at all, to uh, deal with this morning. And these uh, dew point temperatures, again, they remain fairly low, but we'll be looking at uh, well, close to 60 by later on this afternoon. That starts when you that's when you start, I should say, getting on the side where you can kind of uh, kind of notice and smell the humidity a little bit. 68 today at uh, noon and 74 for a high temperature. You know, the past couple of afternoons, we've been right around mid 60s. It's been really pleasant, kind of coolish in the shadows, but it's going to be warm today and yeah, even warmer tomorrow. How long will that last? Closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, any problems out there? Well, Mike, we do have uh, one crash being reported now. This is at 410 at uh, Ingram Road out near Ingram uh, Park Mall. But you can see uh, traffic there on 410 uh, flowing pretty smoothly, and we can tell that uh, with our travel times here. This is uh, 410 between uh, I-10 and 151, seven minutes uh, each direction. So at this hour, uh, things are looking fine there. Looking at some other uh, travel times, it'll green all around the region, 26 minutes coming in on 281 uh, from Belverde, 25 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels, 25 minutes on I-10 from Bernie, 20 on 90 if you're coming in from Castroville. Here's a look at uh, Transguide 410 at Perrin Vital. That side of 410 looks good, as does 1604 at Bandera. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. An overnight chase led a man straight to jail. Castle Hills police caught him, even though they say he tried to get away first in a car, then on foot. Our Katrina Weber is live where it ended near Ramsey and San Pedro Avenue. Now, Katrina, we understand there was some damage involved here. Well, that's right, and you can see signs of it all along the street. There's broken glass and car parts. Now, police say that he uh, hit a, car, a parked car that was here. This street is called, uh, is called Sahara. It's near Ramsey, but the chase actually began closer to Loop 410 and Blanco Road. And from what police tell us, it's a good thing that no one or nothing else was hit. They say at times the driver was traveling about 80 to 90 miles per hour on neighborhood streets. The officers initially tried to stop him around 2.30 this morning because they suspected that the driver was intoxicated and they say he was driving recklessly. Instead of stopping, though, he took off. After hitting the parked car here, he tried to run away, but police hit him with a taser and then arrested him. They actually had to call for paramedics to remove one of the prongs from the taser that was stuck in his skin. The police say inside the car, they also found a female passenger who was complaining about injuries, and she was taken to a hospital for treatment. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now 533, Alejandro Mayorkas is officially the new U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security. The Cuban native is the first Latino and immigrant to hold that position. Mayorkas' confirmation comes as President Joe Biden eyes making changes to former President Donald Trump's hardline immigration policies. CNN's John Lawrence reports. With a few strokes of the pen, President Joe Biden starts erasing a part of his predecessor's legacy. I'm not making new law. I'm eliminating bad policy. On Tuesday, Biden signed three executive orders related to immigration. We want to put in place an immigration process here uh, that can that is humane, that is moral. One of the orders establishes a task force to reunite families who were separated at the southern border as they try to enter the U.S. The second action addresses the root causes of our migration to our southern border. And the third action, the third order I'm going to be signed, orders a full review of the previous administration's harmful and counterproductive immigration policies, uh, basically across the board. 
In addition to former President Donald Trump's heavily touted border wall, his stance on immigration included hardline policies aimed at keeping immigrants and refugees out of the country and required non-Mexican asylum seekers to stay in Mexico until their scheduled court dates. When I became governor, border security was a state issue. When Donald Trump ran for president in 2016, he made it a national issue. So I have a great concern that all the gains that we've been able to achieve on the border can be lost. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The FBI joining the investigation into the mysterious deaths of two men at Fort Bragg in North Carolina two months ago. On December 2nd, the bo uh, bodies of Timothy Dumas and Master Sergeant William Levine were discovered at the base. The FBI is joining the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Division in getting to the bottom of the death, which is being investigated as a double homicide. Photos of Levine's pickup truck found at the crime scene and another belonging to Dumas found abandoned somewhere else have been released by the FBI to help generate leads. Experts now say the biggest spreaders of coronavirus in the U.S. are adults ages 20 to 49. A research team at Imperial College in London looked at cell phone location data of more than 10 million people. They estimated those ages 35 to 49 accounted for more than 40 percent of new transmissions through mid-August. Young adults from 20 years old to 34 were responsible for responsible for another 35%. The researchers reported that efforts to control the spread, including vaccination, should focus on those age groups. They said children and older adults accounted for very little spread. About 4,000 Meals on Wheels participants are eligible to sign up for COVID-19 vaccines under a new program announced by the city this week. Since Monday, 380 homebound seniors have already been vaccinated through the Seniors First program. The city, along with the San Antonio Housing Authority and Fire Department, have teamed up to bring shots to seniors at their home. This is only available to seniors who are in the Meals on Wheels program. So far, about one third of those in the program have asked to be put on the list. Volunteers who deliver the meals say seniors are grateful. Many of them don't have even don't have smartphones. We ran into one this morning that doesn't. And when you try to do anything through a land phone, you can't text, you can't email. With some of the calls that we're hearing, they're like, how quick can this happen? And it's going to be a slow process. The state has promised more than a thousand weekly shots to the city for homebound seniors for the next few weeks. To find out more about the Meals on Wheels program, call 866-806-6972. And time now, it's 537 and 45 degrees for now. Still ahead, how you soon may be able to get some free buffalo wings thanks to the Super Bowl. And also next, as an officer lies in honor at the U.S. Capitol following the riot, lawmakers are making big changes when it comes to security. And how about warmer? Yeah, that is what's on tap for us uh, in our South Texas forecast. Mike has details coming up right here on GMSA. It's now 540. The remains of the police officer killed during the Capitol riots lying in honor at the Capitol this morning. And as lawmakers pay their respects, investigators struggle to build a federal murder case. CNN's Britt Conway has the latest. The remains of U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick lying in honor at the Capitol, the fifth private citizen to be honored this way. President Joe Biden and his wife Jill paying their respects. The president shaking his head. And it seems federal investigators are doing the same as they struggle to build a murder case because of a lack of evidence linking a specific act to Sicknick's death as he defended the Capitol during last month's insurrection. Tension here is still high, remembering what happened that day. I hide behind my door like this. Security has tightened and there are metal detectors now, but the new protocols frustrated some lawmakers, frustrating House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in turn. When the enemy is within the House of Representatives. Now there's a new rule that just passed on the House floor, fining any member who doesn't complete security screenings before entering the House chamber. $5,000 the first time, $10,000 if it happens again. With Pelosi saying in part, quote, the people's house must and will be safe so that we can honor our responsibility to do the people's work. And Massachusetts Representative Jim McGovern spoke up on the issue, too, saying some members on the other side have disrespected these Capitol Police officers, all to avoid this basic safety measure. That is no way to treat our heroes. One of those heroes, Officer Brian Sicknick 
who will receive a congressional tribute Wednesday morning. I'm Britt Conway reporting. I-42, about 45 degrees. And coming up next, how a particular kind of vitamin may be the key to preventing you from getting COVID-19. There have been several vitamins that have been talked about that potentially could help you get from co uh, keep from getting COVID-19. Um, one of them is, we believe, called quercetin. We're about to find out. We're about to find out yeah. pretty soon. Our Sarah Costa will explain what one vitamin does and why some health experts are saying it can help fight the virus. Quercetin, it's a plant flavonoid found in capers and green tea, and now it's become a new hype vitamin during this fight against COVID-19. Here are some of the benefits and why some researchers believe it may help. Some proponents of the over-the-counter vitamin quercetin believe it could be one part of the treatment regimen against COVID-19, along with convalescent plasma and remdesivir. According to MedPage Today, quercetin has long been evaluated for its potential protective effects against cancers, heart disease, and cells that release Histamines. MedPage Today says in cell cultures, quercetin has been shown to prevent viral entry and reduce cytopathic effects of many viruses, including rhinovirus and poliovirus. In a 2016 animal study, rodents were administered quercetin before being exposed to a lethal load of Ebola and they survived. A human COVID-19 trial in Turkey with 95 patients with COVID-19 received a thousand milligrams of the active treatment dose of quercetin and 113 healthcare workers received 500 milligram dose of a prophylaxis of quercetin. The study says that there were no recorded COVID-19 cases among the healthcare workers taking the treatment and no deaths among the patients. Dr. Paul Merrick, the chief of pulmonary and critical care medicine at Eastern Virginia Medical says it's based on good science and basic science. However, we don't have any clinical data. Dr. Merrick told the website that despite not having enough studies on quercetin, that if you have something that is cheap, beneficial and safe, what do you have to lose? Back to you guys. In your morning consumer headlines, when you think of Valentine's Day, you might not think of a home improvement store. Lowe's is hoping to change that with their Night of Lomance. Those couples in 10 metro areas can enter to win a Valentine's Day evening of painting. It involves color choices, a huge canvas, as well as splashing, rolling, and having fun. San Antonio is not one of those locations, so people outside the selected cities can attend a virtual cooking class mm. instead. Buffalo Wild Wings believes the only thing better than extra football is free wings. Uh, the restaurant offering free six count wings if Sunday's Super Bowl goes into overtime. This deal for everyone in the U.S. and Canada. If there's an overtime, the deal will happen on February 22nd from 4 to 7 p.m. local time. This is the third year Buffalo Wild Wings has offered free wings, but there, there was a decisive victor after four quarters the last two years, according to Buffalo Wild Wings gaming partner, B uh, bet MGM, there is a 10% chance of free wings. Taco Bell is out with a new offer that will thrill taco lovers. They're launching a build your own cravings box. It costs about $5 and gives customers the ability to make their own combo meals. Rewards members can get the build your own cravings box on the Taco Bell app. It will be available for other digital customers starting on February 11th. You can get the new limited time box in 18 different variations, including vegetarian options by changing out proteins for beans. 548. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel. It's a good time for tacos, I think. Well, people have time <laughs> to go grab one on their way to work. <laughs> Just all that food talk taking me hungry again. But uh, uh, things mostly uh, looking okay. We still have a bit of a situation here. This is 410 at uh, Ingram near the uh, Ingram Park Mall. You can see uh, there's a small delay there, uh, 42 miles per hour approaching uh, that scene, but it looks like that's going to be cleared up shortly. So uh, that should keep moving. And this, uh, another look at the travel time in that area, uh, just looking about seven minutes uh, each way, a little bit of a slowdown heading from I-10 to 151. So otherwise, uh, that looks fine. And looking at uh, Fredericksburg Road this morning, just around the Medical Center area, 
uh, 16 minutes uh, from Woodlawn to Hebner and in 14 minutes uh, the other way as people get out and about this morning. And finally, here's Trains Guide. This is 410 at uh, 151. Had some construction overnight and you see people are getting out and about. Looks like there's uh, quite a bit of traffic there for this time of the morning, guys. Our morning commute is off and running. Yes, it is. And Mike, I noticed the moon behind you at, at home. <laughs> I was trying to put it in perspective for, for Rooney. She was making the planets out of Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. But ah. since she had a lot of white Play-Doh, the moon was like this big. I was like, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the sun needs to be bigger. <laughs> but anyway, beautiful shot. <laughs> but a lot of times when the, yeah. you know, the full moon is rising mm -hmm. and the kind of an optical illusion always looks so big on the horizon right there. But this is a great, we're at the um, last quarter of the moon, of course, last Thursday on the 28th was the full moon and uh, boy, it's beautiful out there. It was a glorious sunset and a glorious moon rise and we're going to be seeing a beautiful sunrise later on. Uh, I've got a couple of clouds around, but no, no visibility problems looking in this view off to the east. There's a little bit of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. Not much. Uh, you know, we had a couple of those high wispy clouds sort of hanging around yesterday. That's what we will see again later on today. And again, the humidity is uh, pretty low, but we are going to start to see dew points go up throughout the afternoon, not to where it's going to make you sweat, but you just sort of notice it. It won't be just as crisp in the afternoon. And then overnight, I'm mean, really going to start to see a lot of humidity and you start getting above 60 and that's when you can definitely feel it. So we'll be flirting with that by tomorrow morning and then throughout the day tomorrow. However, by the evening hours, here comes the next front moving on in here and it's really going to get rid of well, get rid of the numbers too, but it's really going to get rid of the uh, humidity as we go into Friday. And that's also then going to pull in slightly cooler air, just basically getting us back down to where we should be because tomorrow is going to be the hot day. We'll be up to 80. A lot of folks are going to be well up into the low 80s. The record here in town is 84 degrees. I don't think we're going to be hitting that, but obviously it's going to be uh, pretty close to it. So around the country, obviously a lot going on north, kind of on the uh, the upper bookends, northwest and northeast, that huge storm system, which dumped feet of snow up there, still snowing in parts of New York and Pennsylvania, and then off to the uh, northwest. But that's going to be moving across the northern part of the country. And we just can't really get anything too awfully cold around here. 13 in Cut Bank, uh, teens up to the north. We're at about a normal low temperature as of right now. And all that really cold air is just going to be staying up there to the north of us for the uh, foreseeable future up through at least the middle part of next week. Now beyond that, there are some indications that we may see a pretty substantial front trying to move on through here. But again, that's still a week, week and a half away. So you guys got to kind of take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. 68 degrees today at noon. Mostly sunny guys. Good looking day and then a high temperature today up to 74. Very, very warm. So jacket this morning. You won't need it by this afternoon and tomorrow. Yeah, jacket in the morning. But look at that. We get up to 80 in the afternoon and front moves through late. That's going to get rid of the humidity. It's going to be kind of a I don't want to call it muggy tomorrow, but you know, you'll, you'll notice a lot more humidity around here. But then we get rid of all that humidity. Uh, 65 on Friday, the weekend, very pleasant. 72 Saturday, 66 on Sunday, and hopefully some rain by late Monday into Tuesday of next week. And just about normal temperatures. And like I said, there are some indications that a pretty good cold surge late next week or maybe in toward Valentine's. Is this the time of year we just give up on the thermostat and we turn everything off? I, pretty, much. pretty much. And then have everything ready. Just be prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then tomorrow, I mean, the air conditioner is probably going to start mm -hmm. to, to kick in in the afternoon. So more drug change. 553, 45 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lottery numbers. We have pick three, one, three, seven, fireball four, daily four, zero, one, three, one, fireball five. Cash five numbers, two, nine, 11, 25, 35, and your mega millions numbers, 13, 37, 38, 40, 67, and mega ball of 10, mega plier two. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the urgent warning about how critical the next six weeks will be in the pandemic. Plus, the new push this morning to vaccinate before the virus variants take over. Thousands of people are now overdue for their second shots. Dr. Anthony Fauci will join us live. You'll see it right here on GMA. Welcome back to GMSA. Every two seconds, someone here in the United States needs blood to help fill the need our KSAC community partner, University Health, is hosting a blood drive this month. 
It's happening February 18th and again on the 19th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Whitty Museum located over on Broadway. If you want to participate, you'll need to make an appointment and you can do so by calling this number. It is 210-358-2812 or visit donatebloodtoday.com. We also have all this information on ksatcommunity.com. We'd love for you to help out. We appreciate it. One teen mentor is sharing her message for young girls in sports. Just ahead here on GMSA, more details on a platform she created for female athletes to tell their stories. But right now, a whole lot of folks are hitting the roads. So let's check Trans Guide 1604 and Bandera Road. Heavy traffic at I-35 and Topper Wine. As a matter of fact, folks are already hitting the brakes as they head off in that other direction. And there's I-35 at BAMP C. We'll get another look at uh, your traffic authority and your forecast coming up right here on GMSA. You're looking at part of a path of destruction that Castle Hills police say a driver left as he tried to get away from them. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll tell you more about it. The coronavirus variant in the United Kingdom has mutated once again. We'll hear why it's causing top scientists in the world to worry. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is a cold start to your day at 45 degrees, but overall it's going to be pretty mild. In fact, we are expecting some warmer temperatures later this week. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, February 3rd. Thanks for joining us this morning, and I hope you have all kinds of outfits prepared because the weather is just changing constantly. Sounds like you're going to need a little bit of everything except for the knit mittens. Mm. Uh, let's check in now with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Correct. Chilly this morning. Lose your jacket. Well, don't lose it, but kids. Right. Have your name in it, but uh, you don't need a jacket by later on this afternoon because we're going to be almost 10 degrees above normal and then it's going to get even hotter. Yes, talking hot tomorrow with temperatures that are going to be uh, almost approaching uh, record highs tomorrow. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now, maybe one or two uh, high wispy clouds. 43, 39, Bulverde. Normal low is 42, so we're pretty much in our right in our ballpark. 38, uh, Kerrville, 39, Bandera, and Stinson is at 42 degrees. And uh, we're going to be right around, say, uh, 45 this morning, and then it's going to be a nice little warm up. Uh, temperatures are going to continue up into the uh, mid 60s, mid to upper 60s by noon. And then, like I said, we top off right around 74 later on today. It is going to be very mild overnight tonight. Still a jacket tomorrow morning, but we'll be, um, gosh, almost 15 degrees above normal tomorrow morning. And then, like I said, getting up to 80. That's not going to last through the weekend, though. It's going to cool down, but not cold cold details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority samuel king and okay is the map telling i mean nothing going on out there nothing, nothing uh, really going on even okay. that crash we had earlier mike at uh, 410 and in ingram that has cleared up we'll give you a closer look at that area now we had a bit of a delay but now uh, smooth sailing there, 69 miles per hour. So we can take that uh, off the board coming up. This is uh, 410 at uh, 151, and you we're getting some reports. There's some debris uh, in the roadway there, but you can see traffic starting to uh, pick up. And let's take a look at the travel time there. Uh, 10 minutes uh, from 1604 to 90, eight minutes going the other way. So whatever debris in the road, not really impacting uh, travel times too much. Uh, 26 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels, 25 minutes on I-10 coming from Bernie, 29 minutes from Seguin and coming in from Lytle on 35, 16 minutes into downtown San Antonio. Mark Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. One man has learned the hard way that a car and even his feet can't outrun police. Castle Hills police arrested him overnight after a chase that raced through several neighborhood streets. Our Katrina Weber is live where it all ended with a crash near Ramsey Road and San Pedro Avenue. Now, Katrina, was anyone hurt? Well, you're right, there was a crash, a parked car that the suspect hit right here. Now, according to officers, he had a passenger in his car who was complaining about injuries. That woman was taken to a hospital. The suspect, meanwhile, was taken to jail after a brief visit with paramedics. The Castle Hills police caught him again after he hit a parked car on the street called Sahara, then tried to run away. They hit him with a taser and arrested him. The chase actually started a few miles from here on Blanco Road near Loop 410. Officers suspected that that driver was intoxicated because they say he was driving recklessly. 
Instead of stopping, though, they say he led them on a chase, at times going as fast as 80 to 90 miles per hour on neighborhood streets. Luckily, no one and nothing else was hit by the car. After using the taser on him, officers had to call for paramedics because one of the prongs got stuck in that driver's skin. But again, no other injuries reported to him. But he still faces a painful reality, the idea that he now faces a list of criminal charges. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, firefighters had to respond to a fire at a vacant apartment on the city's north side late last night. Happened around 930 in the 7200 block of Blanco Road, just north of Loop 410. Firefighters say it appears that homeless people got into the vacant apartment and started the fire. They estimate damage to be worth about ten to fifteen thousand dollars. No injuries were reported. A man wanted for eight crimes in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, including first degree murder and aggravated assault, was arrested in Live Oak. According to the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force, 22 year old Tyrese Lighty is accused of being involved in a shooting that left two people dead and several others hurt last October. Officers say they found and arrested Lighty at an apartment in the 13,000 block of Oak Terrace Drive last night. That's near Loop 1604 and I-35. Lighty is now in the Bear County Jail and is waiting to be extradited back to South Carolina. To the pandemic, local health officials report 1,260 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. It's also report 15 more people have died. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven day moving average is more than 1500 cases a day. He says nearly 1200 people remain in the hospital with the virus. And both the mayor and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf are urging people not to throw Super Bowl parties this weekend. The mayor says health officials have determined that the bulk of community transmissions happen inside people's homes. Health officials also say that with every infection, the coronavirus gets a better chance to mutate and possibly become more dangerous. Mayor Nirenberg says the city will continue to give out fines and citations, which could cost you hundreds of dollars. A more contagious variant of coronavirus has mutated yet again, and experts are worried this mutation will impact the effectiveness of the vaccines. The mutation was found in the United Kingdom, but has sparked a push to search for variants in the U.S. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. This morning, an urgent push to vaccinate against the coronavirus before mutations take hold. Doctors in England say a more contagious strain that originated in that country has mutated again, and it appears vaccines are less effective against the new variant, similar to the variant first found in South Africa. But it's a very stressful situation. In the U.S., infections and hospitalizations are dropping. California reported 12,000 new cases Tuesday, the lowest daily case count since Thanksgiving. But Dr. Anthony Fauci is sounding the alarm about the next six weeks because of the virus mutations now spreading. When you have that much virus circulating, you're going to get a lot of mutations, no doubt about it. So we're really concerned that it's almost a race here of trying to suppress the level of replication. The CDC says 32 million Americans have now received the vaccine, but access to doses will soon expand. The Biden administration announcing 1 million vaccine doses will be sent to more than 6,000 pharmacies across the country beginning next week. This is a critical step to provide the public with convenient, trusted places to get vaccinated in their communities. State and local guidelines will determine who's eligible to get a shot at their neighborhood pharmacy, and availability will be limited at first. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Learning to drive can be a scary experience and not just for the person in the driver's seat. That's right. A new poll finds two thirds of people surveyed say giving a driving lesson was scarier than learning to drive. New York Traffic Authority Samuel King joins us now. Samuel, what else did the survey find? Well, it found that about a third of Americans have taught someone to drive and they say nine in 10 of those people found it to be a harrowing experience. The poll also looked at the trickiest skills to pass on. It found that those were parallel parking, changing lanes and merging onto the highway. As for new drivers, the biggest mistakes were not checking mirrors, not checking all directions before moving into traffic and cutting tight corners, as well as forgetting to use turn signals. That's a pet peeve for a lot of people. Half of the respondents confessed they would be afraid to get in a car with their teenage selves, and here's why. The average person had five close calls when they were learning to drive. It almost resulted in an accident. One in five did get into an accident while learning to drive, and the same number had a crash that actually damaged that vehicle. 
As for who taught people to drive, almost half of people reported they learned from their father. Well, a third said it was actually from a friend. And then about a quarter of people uh, learned from a sibling, their mother, or a driving instructor. A study was commissioned by True Car and conducted by Wimple. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. There is an Amber Alert this morning that may have just been sent to your phone a few minutes ago. The Salina Police Department north of Dallas is looking for two-year-old Levi Pugue, who was abducted. Now, he is blonde hair, he has blue eyes, and was last seen wearing a diaper. Police are looking for 42-year-old Isaac Pugue in connection with his abduction. He is believed to be driving a white 2019 Toyota Tacoma with Texas license plate MDT1625. Law enforcement officials believe this child is in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Salina Police Department at 972-547-5350. By now, 609, 45 degrees. A popular TikTok trend is the focus of several privacy warnings. Find out why there's a warning to stop participating in the red silhouette trend. Facebook, once again, a major player in social media controversy. After the break, we'll take a look at the company's oversight board and how it influences the company's decisions. And taking a look outside with live cam. Yes, the weather is ever changing, but for now it is 45 degrees, so go ahead and grab a warm coffee this morning. We'll be right back. You don't have to go far to attend a historically black college. We are no longer predominantly black, but we are historically black, and we will always be historically black. The nation's only HBCU and minority-serving institution, St. Philip's College, is also known as the Pride of the East Side. It was founded in 1898 by St. Philip's Episcopal Church, but as a Saturday evening sewing school for six young black girls in La Vallita. They wanted to create opportunities for the daughters and granddaughters of emancipated slaves. In 1902, the bishop brought Miss Artemisia Bowden to San Antonio to help turn it into a grammar school. Between 1917 and 1927, the school moved to the east side. The campus was built and named a private school. During the Great Depression, Bowden herself worked to keep the school funded. This continued taking a salary. She had students that were traveling around singing to raise money for the college. She bartered, traded chickens, eggs, hogs, pigs in the community to keep it surviving and thriving. Eventually, Bowden brought the school together with San Antonio College, making it a public school. It wasn't easy for her when they formed the San Antonio Union uh, Junior College District. She was not able to attend the board meetings. She sat on the outside. She continued and she persisted. And though the assignment was to create a grammar school, she created a vocational school, an industrial school to a junior college. Bowden served as president for 52 years. She passed in 1969 and was named a holy saint by the Episcopal Church. The board, which has been called Facebook's version of the Supreme Court, announced that it actually overturned Facebook's decision in four out of five cases before it. Facebook's oversight board is intended to create a new way for users to appeal content decisions on both Facebook and Instagram, given previous criticism over how the company handles hate speech, violent extremism, and graphic materials. Now, the 20-person board includes a former prime minister, a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and the former editor-in-chief of The Guardian. Facebook says its decisions are final and binding. Binding. The cases we're going to be talking about touch on the issues of hate speech, nudity, and COVID misinformation. All five cases involved Facebook taking down posts for breaking their rules. The first series of decisions come ahead of the most closely watched case yet for the board, whether former President Donald Trump gets to stay on Facebook or not. Earlier this month, Facebook and its subsidiary, Instagram, banned the ex-president's account from posting for at least the remainder of his term and potentially indefinitely. All of this happened after a mob of his supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol to protest the election results. Last week, Facebook said it referred to its suspension of the former president to the independent board for review. That board will have 90 days from that referral to decide whether the Trump ban should be upheld or not. But a spokesperson for the Facebook board said it expects to, quote, act more quickly than that, end quote. Guys, back to you. We have forecasts coming up. But for now, let's go ahead and check traffic with Samuel King. I know there was a couple of holdups earlier. Yeah, we have one uh, right now, uh, Stephanie and Mark. This one is going to be uh, on the west side, 410 at 151. You see 
a major slowdown there. Red is not good. That means uh, traffic is really slow, looking at 12 minutes uh, approaching uh, that intersection. Here's a look at that at a trans guide. You can see uh, the delay there in front of you on the screen there. So uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're heading out uh, in that area. And taking a look at the uh, time here, looking at uh, between 151 and Ray Ellison, uh, nine minutes now, uh, four minutes the other way. So you can see just sort of how that delay uh, is impacting things uh, right now. And one more situation. This is just over the uh, Comal County line. This is a uh, San Marcos uh, 35 uh, reported as closed right now. There's like a vehicle that's blocking uh, the northbound lane. So if you need to uh, head up to uh, San Marcos or to Austin, uh, you might want to head out now because uh, this is uh, causing uh, some disruption uh, in that area, guys. That's way up there, but good to know. Thank you, Samuel. Yes, thank you. And uh, definitely a jacket this morning. Yeah, but uh, boy, you sure won't need it by later on this afternoon. We're going to see a huge, huge warm up throughout the course of the day. Uh, 42 degrees this morning. Normal low temperature and normal high is 65. Yeah, we're going to be about uh, almost 10 above that. Plenty of sunshine around here all the way up to uh, 74 degrees. And and look at this picture. Another one of these beautiful, beautiful windmill shots. Not quite as much sunshine yesterday. We had a few clouds kind of hanging around here. We should see a lot of sunshine once again today. All right. Who remembers 25 years ago? Anybody? Sure. Anyone? Anyone? Remember February 25 years ago? Mm -hmm. We started off and we had some Brutally cold temperatures by the morning of the 4th got down to 19 degrees. There was a little bit of uh, trace of precipitation, so we did have some icing to deal with to start off the month of February. And then just three weeks later, we hit 100. Were three. you here for that, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Okay. My first February I was here. Uh -huh. I'd gotten here June the, the year before. It was like, good yeah. Goodness and gracious. That and was one, your welcome gift. Yeah, 100 degrees, the earliest we've ever hit 100. And then just uh, a week later, basically, we had a little more ice. Got down to 34 here in town, but we had some freezing, I remember, in the and some ice in uh, two-thirds of an inch of rain. So you'd worked in Green Bay and Memphis. You got here, and you're like, what did I get myself into? Well, yeah, I remember the, my wife at the time, she's like, I've never been lying up at the pool, at, you know, right around Christmas time <laughs> around here. So, but yeah, it was 100, and then got down to freezing a week <laughs> later. So. Wow. That's why February can always be kind of squirrely. So uh, nothing in the forecast, though, that uh, resembles any rodents or squirrels or anything like that. Uh, that on the heels of Groundhog Day. Anyway, uh, we will start to see a couple of clouds in the mornings and then plenty of sunshine in the afternoon. When that front moves through later on tonight, late, uh, it may scare off a, scare up a couple of uh, sprinkles way, way off to the east, but it's just not really going to do much of anything. It will clear out the humidity because the humidity is going to start to come up later on this afternoon and especially tomorrow. It's going to be hot and you will definitely feel the humidity tomorrow and then going into the weekend, you know, a couple of clouds here and there and that's pretty much going to be about it. It's going to be a beautiful weekend and temperatures. Yeah, we go from 80 back down to normal on Friday and then stay near normal mid 60s, although a little bit uh, warmer on Saturday, but overall a really nice looking weekend. And as far as colder temperatures, there are some indications that may be way down the road late next week or even next weekend toward uh, Valentine's could have some uh, colder temperatures. 68 degrees today, mostly sunny skies at noon and a high temperature today up to 74 and plenty of sunshine out there. Then tomorrow, boy, it's going to be a much milder start. Still want to have a jacket, you know, mid 50s going to be kind of a that dampish cool with a lot more humidity around. We'll have that front move through later on, but not before hitting 80 degrees. 65 on Friday and uh, you know mid and some upper 60s, even low 70s over the weekend. So again, a pleasant weekend, a couple of clouds here, and maybe some rain, hopefully some rain by Tuesday of next week. See, we heard you talk about this wild swing in temperatures before back in, what was it, 96? 96. But I, I guess I never formally asked if you were actually here for that. Event. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Remember it quite well. Yeah, February's can be a little weird. Yeah, it was your welcome to San Antonio oh. gift. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now it's uh, 621, 45 degrees. And Jeff Bezos stepping down as CEO of Amazon, but he will still have a prominent role in that company. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
rich, indulgent chocolate with a luscious caramel filling. With love from San Francisco. Ghirardelli Caramel Squares. Makes life a bite better. Millions are saying yes to Allegra, the number one allergist-recommended non-drowsy brand. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, and unlike Zyrtec, it's non-drowsy. Say yes to the fastest non-drowsy 24-hour relief. Allegra. At Panera, we didn't just raise the bar. With warm roasted chicken, fresh broccoli, and a savory glaze, we raised the bar on the bowl. Order our new teriyaki chicken and broccoli bowl for delivery or pickup today. Panera. In this morning's GMA First Look, end of an era. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, announcing he's stepping down. The man who started Amazon in 1994, building it from an online bookstore into a global giant worth more than $1.6 trillion. Trying to find a, a product that actually matched the internet technology. That was really the key. Because right now, the web is still a fairly immature platform. Changing the way we shop, stream, and get our deliveries. Announcing he'll leave his role as CEO later this year. The idea for Amazon has made Bezos one of the wealthiest people on the planet, worth an estimated $196.4 billion. So what will this change do to Amazon's stock? And what's next for one of the world's richest people? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, SpaceX launched another test flight for its bullet-shaped starship from Boca Chica Beach down in far south Texas yesterday. And just like the first launch, this one ended in another fiery crash. SpaceX says this launch did not make it as far up before it flipped on its side and started its descent. The company hopes the spacecraft will help carry people to Mars. I don't think we have the video here of the actual crash. We'll try to get that edited for you. And there are new privacy warnings about TikTok's so-called red, red silhouette challenge. The trend involves using a red filter to create a silhouette of your body, promoting empowerment and a way for people to feel better about their own bodies. However, videos on YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit are providing instructions on how to get rid of that filter, potentially exposing people in minimal clothing or in the nude. Apple seems to be taking a step towards making electric vehicles. Reports out of South Korea say the company will announce a partnership with Kia later this month by investing more than $3 billion in the car maker. That report says the cars will be for sale in 2024. However, both companies have not released a comment. And time now is 627 and 45 degrees for now. The Senate is preparing to hold former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. We'll hear what his defense team plans to say at trial. Police say a driver led them on a chase overnight, and you can tell from the damage here that things didn't end very well for him. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. The Capitol police officer killed in the January insurrection lies in honor inside the U.S. Capitol as Trump's impeachment lawyers argue he did not incite the violence. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest coming up. And outside with live cam, the sun very slowly beginning its rise as uh, we now deal with the fallout of Punks Tony Phil's forecast. Six more weeks of winter. <laughs> Don't tell that to Mike Osterhage. His forecast is in complete disagreement. I would agree. In a good way. Yeah, it's okay. We'll ask him in a second. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us. It's Wednesday, February 3rd. So six more weeks of winter in some parts of the country, but definitely not here, Mike. Well, what's winter for us? mid 60s or close to 70. And, this is true. And, well, it and, can be anything. And yeah, I was going to say it could be anything and it's going to be almost anything. So we're going to be yeah, it's not going to be anything like winter the next uh, couple of afternoons. So early morning glow of the sunrise. Beautiful out there. Maybe a few high was wispy clouds throughout the day. 43 right now. Grab a jacket and uh, 37. 42 is the normal low temperatures. So uh, well, at least day one of Phil's forecast. Correct. A little bit of a breeze out of the northwest at uh, three miles per hour. And even temperatures in the hill country are warmer than what they were yesterday. We did have some freezing readings yesterday. Now we're staying in the mid to upper 30s in uh, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Rock Springs at 45. And throughout the day, a cool morning, sunny, mid 70s later on today. So you won't need a jacket this afternoon. And then tomorrow, much milder start. We're going to see a lot of humidity come in here overnight. So we'll stay in the mid 50s and then get up to 80 tomorrow. Near record high temperature, the record being 84.
54 degrees, sort of back to reality, back to normal on Friday and the weekend overall seasonable, pleasant to, to uh, mild side and very nice this weekend. Anything uh, wintry way down the road? Possibly details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and it's been pretty quiet so yeah, far this just morning. Just a few things here and here. Uh, Mike, if you were listening and you were with us a few minutes ago, we had this situation at 410 and 151 with the backup, but you can see uh, stuff starting to flow again. So just that quickly, uh, things are moving along. But we do have a new crash. This is on I-10 at Sacramento uh, heading eastbound. So let's take a look here at the, the travel times now. Re not really impacting that uh, too much. 24 minutes each direction between Bernie and downtown. And once you're inside 1604, it looks like 12 to 13 minutes. So only uh, really Really a difference of one minute there in each direction. So I have the situation. Well, we did have a situation up here on 35. It looks like it's reopened up here in Hayes County. So smooth sailing. If you happen to be heading from New Braunfels, say up to San Marcos this morning, 35 has reopened. And one more look at travel times coming in from New Braunfels on 35, 26 minutes. So looking good this morning, guys. It seems a parked car accomplished what Castle Hill Police has been trying to do, get a speeding driver to stop. They took that man into custody early this morning after he hit that parked car. Katrina Weber is live where it happened near Ramsey and San Pedro. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier there was a pretty lengthy chase. Well, that's right. It went all through the Harmony Hills neighborhood, at times reaching speeds of up to 80 to 90 miles per hour. The Castle Hills finally were able to put the handcuffs on that driver only after he crashed and tried to run away. They originally tried to stop him around 2.30 this morning on Blanco Road near Loop 410, but the driver kept going, speeding along neighborhood streets. He hit a car parked on Sahara Street, which is near San Pedro and Ramsey. Then he got out and ran. Officers chased him down and used a taser on him. The paramedics had to come in to remove one of the prongs from the taser that got stuck in the man. Out here, you can see uh, where his car ended up, where it hit the parked car. There's a lot of debris here on the ground. The police say there was a passenger in the suspect's car who did complain about injuries. That woman was taken to a hospital for treatment. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. San Antonio police need your help finding suspects involved in two robbery cases. The first happened back on January 17th. Police say that suspect was seen breaking into a vehicle in a parking lot in the 8000 block of Bandera Road. When confronted by the victim, police say the suspect threatened the 41 year old woman with a gun and then ran away. Second one happened at a Walgreens of Broadway in Nacogdoches on January 28th. Police say this man started taking facial care products off the shelves, putting them in a backpack. They say three employees tried to stop him, but he threatened to spray them with mace. The suspect ran off. If you recognize anyone in these two robberies, call Crime Pops Toppers at 210-224-STOP. About 4,000 Meals on Wheels participants are eligible to sign up for COVID-19 vaccines under a new city program since Monday. 380 homebound seniors have already been vaccinated through the Seniors First program. The city, San Antonio Housing Authority and the fire department have teamed up to bring the shots to seniors at their homes. So far, about one third of those in the Meals on Wheels program have asked to be put on that list. Volunteers who deliver the meals and news about the program say the seniors are grateful. Many of them don't have even don't have smartphones. We ran into one this morning that doesn't. And when you try to do anything through a land phone, you can't text, you can't email. With some of the calls that we're hearing, they're like, how quick can this happen? And it's going to be a slow process. The state has promised more than 1,000 weekly shots to the city for seniors over the next few weeks. To find out more about the Meals on Wheels program, just head to ksat.com. The pandemic will not push back the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf sent a letter to organizers asking that the event be postponed. Judge Wolf says it'll be difficult to keep safety protocols in place with large crowds that are expected, but Rodeo says it will go on as planned starting in less than two weeks. A spokesperson told KSAT there will be temperature checks and uh, masks will be required. 
The upcoming Rodeo and Spurs games are pushing COVID-19 testing to other locations. Starting Friday, the AT&T Center will no longer <laughs> test asymptomatic patients. Community labs will move the testing to other locations around the city. Starting Monday, you can go to the Bar Shop Jewish Community Center. And starting Tuesday, you can go to Rackspace Technology. You can get more information on KSET.com. Reuters reports this morning that Russia's Sputnik 5 COVID-19 vaccine has a nearly 92% success rate in preventing coronavirus. That is according to a peer-reviewed result from a late-stage clinical trial published in the Lancet International Medical Journal. Russia initially announced the vaccine success rate in August of last year, but had been criticized for being released too quickly, cutting corners, and lacking transparency. Now. Reuters reports the makers of the Sputnik 5 are requesting emergency authorization use in the European Union. This morning, we are getting a better picture of the legal arguments former President Donald Trump's lawyers will make in his second impeachment trial. That legal team filed a pretrial brief yesterday arguing that the former president did not incite the riot at the U.S. Capitol and that a trial to impeach him would be unconstitutional. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, a somber remembrance inside the U.S. Capitol Rotunda, the cremated remains of an American hero lying in honor. The first family paying their final respects to fallen Capitol Police officer Brian Sicknick, killed in the January 6th insurrection. Hours earlier, House impeachment managers formally declaring it was former President Donald Trump who was singularly responsible for the violent attack that left five dead, including the officer adding it was a betrayal of historic proportions. Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanors by inciting violence against the government of the United States. In the 80-page brief filed Tuesday, Democrats referencing Trump's own words just before the insurrection. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. Saying after his failed efforts to overturn the presidential election, he worked the mob into a frenzy and aimed them like a loaded cannon down Pennsylvania Avenue. If you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. The impeachment manager citing these videos obtained by Just Security, showing the crowd responding to Trump in real time. Take the Capitol right now! The president's legal team directly pushing back in their own 14-page response, denying that Trump violated his oath of office, while suggesting an impeachment trial to convict a former president is unconstitutional. The judge and jury has already announced publicly that the uh, defendant must be convicted in this case. The documents also foreshadowing Trump's attorney's plans to defend his false and baseless claims that he won the election. And that impeachment trial begins next Tuesday. 17 GOP senators would need to join all of the Democrats in order to convict Trump. That right now looking unlikely. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. 640, about 45 degrees. One teen mentor is sharing her message for young girls in sports. After the break, how she created a platform for female athletes to tell their stories. Nina Paneke learned early on that being the only girl on the court doesn't make you popular. Sometimes a lot of the guys didn't necessarily want me on their team. That made her question how other female athletes dealt with gender discrimination and the pay gap. A lot of WNBA players don't make even as much as referees in the NBA. She started interviewing women in sports. As a junior, I had this body of interviews and I felt like, okay, I kind of want to get this message out. That led to Because She Can, a blog that grew into a digital magazine. I would reach out to Olympians, WNBA All-Stars, and they were always so willing to speak with me. The website inspired Johnson & Johnson to create a retail campaign for the FIFA Women's World Cup called Because She Can. I think especially youth athletes need more uh, female mentors. Mentors like Nina, whose passion for fighting gender inequality in sports has her Harvard bound. We get into debates, we talk about it, so she's very spirited and passionate about the things she truly believes in. Nina tells young girls to believe in yourself and not let anyone deter you from your dreams. Until we kind of change the culture and realize that female athletes are just as deserving of an equal pay or just as deserving of publicity in media as male athletes, I think until we really make that idea well known, um, 
there's some work to be done. And it doesn't stop with the athletes. Even female coaches aren't being paid anywhere close to the heads of the men's teams. According to equity and athletics data analysis, when you look at the salaries of the men's basketball coaches in the 2018 Big Ten Conference, it's an average of $864,000 compared to a woman's average of $221,000. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio Spurs back in action today, hoping to move past some bad games over the last week or so. The host, the Minnesota Timberwolves at 730 tonight. You can watch it on Fox Sports Southwest or catch some highlights on GMSA right here tomorrow morning. You might not be able to attend a Spurs game right now, but you can still be at a Spurs game, well, sort of. You can buy and create your own cutout that will sit in a seat at the AT&T Center during Spurs games. It will take up a seat as long as games cannot have in-person attendance. And at the end of the year, you can take it home. Just head to KSET.com for more information. Well, that's cool. Look, the Coyotes already has his cutout ready. The Coyotes <laughs> looks awesome. I know. Let's check traffic at 646. Samuel, what's the latest, sir? Uh, well, we have a couple of uh, incidents. Uh, Mark and Stephanie still have this uh, report crash. This is on uh, I-10 uh, at Sacramento, uh, but not really impacting the highway too much. I believe it's uh, on one of the ramps there, but just something to look out for. And you can notice here we're on Fredericksburg, some uh, delays to this morning. So watch out for that. Some construction later today uh, at I-10 East at East Houston Street near the AT&T Center uh, doing some uh, bridge work over there this week. Actually, you're going to be doing that tomorrow too. Also, this construction during the day on 90 between West Military and Southwest 36th Street kicking off here in about 15 minutes or so running through seven this evening. So be on the lookout for that. And this is a trans guide uh, 35 at uh, Bamsey. Uh, that looks fine this morning and we'll get one more here at 410 at Callahan traffic building, but flowing at that point right now, guys. Samuel, we appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Yes, looking busy and a nice shot again, Woodlawn Lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even you said that it's like that doesn't even look like Woodlawn Lake from that vantage point. Wow. Great picture, yes. Mr. McClellan takes some beautiful shots over there, and that's a great one with the uh, pelican flying by over there. A couple of high wispy clouds. We'll have a few of those hanging around today. Uh, nothing really out there this morning. Boy, we're going to have a spectacular sunrise again this morning. Again, high temperatures yesterday. We stayed right at a normal high, mid-60s. Same thing as the previous day, and that's going to be topped later on today by... Almost about uh, 10 degrees. We're going to be up in the uh, mid 70s later on, mid and even some upper 70s, and probably some low 80s down there along the, the Rio Grande Valley. And then keep adding to that. It's going to be even hotter around here tomorrow. The humidity is still very low, but that's going to start to go up over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. We'll definitely, uh, by tomorrow, feel the humidity. And with the extra humidity around here tonight, that's going to hold temperatures up. So we'll be around the mid 50s tomorrow. Still jacket weather, but nowhere near as chilly as this morning or even the past couple of mornings. Then the front's going to move on through here later on tomorrow evening. It's going to knock the humidity on out of here. Yes, it will bring in some cooler air, but not cold air. It'll just get us back down to normal readings and that means mid 60s by Friday and then we'll sort of moderate a little bit uh, upper 60s low 70s Saturday and still hanging in the 60s on Sunday. So uh, once we get past tomorrow we're looking at almost normal temperatures going on into the uh, the weekend. Now as far as any rain chances there yeah, it may squeeze out a couple of sprinkles well off to the east when that front moves through later on tomorrow evening, but that's pretty much going to be about it. All the weather systems are up there to the north of us, and they're going to be staying up there to the north, and all that cold air is staying up there to the north. There are some indications that we may try and see something by late next week, but until then, first of all, here's the uh, little bit of a front that moves through tomorrow night into Friday, so that just... Yeah, it takes us back down to normal readings. We'll stay very pleasant over the weekend. There had been some indications that there might be a quick shot of colder air by Sunday, but that just doesn't look like it's going to materialize. So we'll stay, like I said, about normal on Sunday and then same thing next week. We get into the zonal pattern. All these upper level wind lines are straight west to east, which means nothing really going on. We'll stay close to normal readings and Unfortunately, no rain chances uh, later on in the week, maybe by Tuesday, Wednesday, a small chance for some rain. But there is, again, that indication that way down the road, perhaps some uh, colder air kind of coming on in here today, 68 at noon. Mostly sunny skies. Good looking day. We make it up into the mid 70s. So jacket this morning, you won't need it by this afternoon. And then overnight, much, much milder, 55 degrees up to 80 tomorrow. 
Front moves through late, breezy on Friday, back to normal readings. Nice looking weekend, 72 Saturday, 66 on Sunday. Normal starting off next week and keep fingers crossed for some rain Tuesday. I just had a vision of Mike Osterhage sitting in his backyard with one of those three panel things on his chest, just kind of trying to get sunning some himself. Sun. <laughs> no, yeah. can't you see that? No. Well, no? Mike will be busy mowing his, the lawn. Yes, he has bigger, more important things to do. Yes, don't let us distract you from the duty at hand. You have to finish the walkway I laid last weekend, so. Yeah, yeah that to do too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 650, 45 degrees. And coming up, Valentine's Day is right around the corner, filled with the color red, hearts, and chocolates. So tomorrow on June Day, we're going to take a look at some of the origins of the holiday and why we celebrate it the way we do. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up as another GMSA flies by. We'll be right back. Castle Hills police say a driver went to great lengths and great speeds trying to get away from them. Still, he ended up in jail. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Well, that chase ended here with a crash. You can see some of the debris on the ground. This area is near Ramsey and San Pedro. Police say that the suspect hit a parked car. They say even that didn't stop him, though. The driver got out and tried to run away. Officers hit him with a taser and then finally arrested him. Now, they originally tried to stop him around 2.30 this morning in the area near Blanco and Loop 410. Police noticed that man driving recklessly and suspected he was intoxicated. He refused to stop, though, and led them on this chase. Police say at times he reached speeds of up to 80 to 90 miles per hour on neighborhood streets. The paramedics had to come in to remove the prongs from the taser that was stuck in the man's skin. They also had to take a woman to the hospital. She was a passenger in the suspect's car and was complaining about injuries from this crash. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Okay, five till seven. A lot more people headed out on the roadways and we had a little bit of a problem. That's right, Samuel. Uh, good morning, uh, Stephanie and Mark. Uh, we have this situation on I-10, but it looks like uh, that crash is clear, but we are having some uh, building delays downtown uh, at the Y to watch out for. Also over here on the east side, loop 410 at I-10 East, uh, that trouble spot there, 35 miles per hour there with the merge. Travel time's looking fairly good though, still 24 minutes on I-10 in from Bernie, 29 minutes on I-10. 10 in from Seguin and here's uh, loop 410 at 151 traffic is flowing but busy this morning Mike get ready for another spectacular sunrise I mean just look at that nice glow out there and grab a jacket we've got some 30s and low 40s around the area but you won't need it by this afternoon we're going to be up uh, right around upper 60s at noon 74 for high temperature even hotter tomorrow up to 80 close to a record and then it's sort of back to reality Friday and the weekend looks very very pleasant and we just have to end with that beautiful picture <laughs> weather's so nice Perfect. everybody take the day off yeah just get outside but we'll be back here at nine. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. <laughs>